Welcome to New York Got Game. Welcome back to another edition of New York Got Game. Interesting times around New York basketball on the professional side. The Knicks, they are just trying to get healthy. We're in March after a very disappointing February for the Knickerbockers. The Nets, they look like they're starting to try to put things together with some of their new pieces and figure out their identity going forward. But it is March. March is a time where we talk a lot about college basketball. This week's episode is going to be all about that, all about college basketball in the New York area. Got a special guest to talk with about that. So let's get right to it. The Knicks are heating up. After losing eight out of ten games, the St. John's Red Storm were left for dead. But now they've got some life as they've won three straight games with two games left in conference play. So what is the state of the Johnnies and what is going on with college basketball in the New York metro area. We are going to answer those questions and much more. One of the best covering college hoops. Some of you know him as the black etologist and have seen his work with Anscape. He is the co-host of the Up Next podcast and Bros Pod with the great Bill Roden, representing Brooklyn to the fullest. My guy, Jamal Murphy. Murph, how you doing, man? I'm chilling, man. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad to have you here on New York God Game. You're one of the best covering college basketball. Thank you. So glad to have you. Are you enjoying this college basketball season thus far? Because March, well, we're in March. Yes. So March Madness is upon us, yes. I guess we can say. How have you been enjoying this college basketball season thus far? I, you know, I enjoy every college basketball season. Good. March is my favorite time of year. It's here. I was just telling my son, hey, it's March. He's mad because he can't play video games in March. He's like, oh, great. Now you're going to be watching TV all day. So, you know, this is my favorite time of year, man. I'm glad you let him know what time it is. Yeah, He's, he to, he knows it's, it's madness. He knows you're going to be taking over the TV. So, it's over. You know, he, he knows. It's all over for him. Holler at you in April. He, he, he should do that. So, Murph, as I mentioned, the Johnnies, they've lost 8 out of 10 and had blown that second half lead a couple weeks ago to Seton Hall right. uh, at home. And after that game, Rick Pitino got into his players, criticized them. But since then, they've won three straight games. What has changed for the Red Storm since that loss to the Pirates? What have you seen change within that team? Well, it, to me, it seems like, and even, even Pitino said this, that they're playing free and they're playing to win. Uh, I think before, you know, they were playing kind of nervous late in games. They're, they're trying not to lose. And I think they, made, they came together and, and pretty much made a decision. Uh, and, and Dennis Jenkins said this, Patino said this, that, you know, after, really after the Georgetown game that they barely won after the Patino tirade, they said, hey, if we go out, we're going to go out trying to win. So now they're not looking at the scoreboard. That was a the thing. They get in the second half, they would be, you know, maybe up by eight, uh, looking at the scoreboard, trying to run the clock down. Now they know they have to finish the game out, um, you know, be aggressive the whole way through, and that's how you win. So it's, I think, I don't know if Patino was preaching that, but it seems that that message finally got through. Yeah, well, some message got through. No to question. Them, right? It, like, you can see the change in them. The thing that I've been worrying about, or not worrying, but wondering about with it, right, is... How much credit should we be giving Patino for, for this turnaround, especially after he lashed into his players? Because what do you make of him doing that than watching how it appears the players have responded? And what do you also make of his first season as a head coach here at St. John's? Well, you know, I, 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 Patino said, he said, he, you know, he, he lashed into them for a reason. But I think even he, know, he knows he went too far. Uh, with, with what he said, basically, you know, you know these guys can't move, they're, they're not tough, I, I recruited the wrong guy. That's, that's really what, you know, hits the heart of a player. You, when, they, when your coach says, I recruited the wrong guys, right? So um, I think he made a mistake by going that far with it. Um, but it, it may have had the desired effect. Patino himself said it didn't really work right away because he felt like they played a poor game against Georgetown mm -hmm. the game after that tirade. But since then, obviously, I think, you know, the kids are trying to prove him wrong. They're trying to show, you know, show I really belong. And Patino, I mean, he's that type of coach. I mean, everyone who's ever played for him, you know, even, even like a Donovan Mitchell once attributed uh, the dog in him to Patino, right? So that, that's kind of Patino's thing. He's trying to put the dog in all his players, right? So this is one of the things he does. He's very honest. Or maybe, and he, he tends to go overboard. Too, maybe too honest. Yeah, maybe too honest. Because I do think he was honest yeah. when, he, when he was saying that stuff. Because they re, he really didn't recruit any stars. He recruited guys, you know, who from, from, you know, lesser programs who were solid, you know, solid college players. But they don't, they don't have, they're not the, an uber-talented team. But he's the one who put that together. So, I mean, you have to blame yourself. 
And he did, to, to be fair to that, right? He right. did put some of this on him now. He did go far. He questioned the players, you right. know, athleticism. Right. He questioned the facilities, folks. He, 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 he went Stuff in. Stuff he knew. He went in. Like, <laughs> yeah, which is fair, right? You right. knew what the facilities yeah, were. And you knew who you recruited. <laughs> and you knew who you recruited. Right. Now, to be fair, he did put it on himself, like you said. One thing I want to follow up with you on that, Murph, is that you also got to give some credit to the players as well, right? Because they yes. responded here. Oh, yeah. The players easily could have folded and said, all right, it's a wrap. We're moving on. This is it. Season's over. They did not do that. Like, the players responded. So it's, it's twofold. But, you know, got to them. And the players also responded to his message, even if he did maybe go a little bit too far. Right. No, no question about it. You get, I mean, the players always get the credit. If the players play well and you win games, it, it's always a player's game. I don't care if it's college or pro or whatever. So, yes, the players deserve the credit. You're right. They could have folded. They, you know, if they, were, if they were lacking toughness to the extent that Patino said, they would have folded. But they showed that they are a tough team. And remember, this, this is an old group. They, you know, the transfers they have are older guys. They've been through a bunch of different types of coaches. They knew what they were getting into when they signed up to play for Patino. Right. In fact, I think most of them wanted that. They wanted to be challenged. You don't play for Patino unless you want to be challenged. You want to be cursed out in practice. You want to have him tell you that he's going to chop you up in seven pieces and send you <laughs> back to where you came from, as the West Virginia a kid who plays for West Virginia said that Patino told them. So I think, you know, they stepped up to the plate. And in the end, I mean, Patino's a great coach. He's a Hall of Fame coach. He knows what buttons to push. Um, and even when he may go too far, he, can, he knows how to bring it back. Right. Right. And he's a, you know, t you know tactically, he's a great coach. So I think, you know, he's, he's getting the job done at this point. You know, it took a while. And, and this is a different college basketball game nowadays because, you, you know, all these teams have transfers. So it's, every team is almost like you have to take about a half a season to figure out who you are. And I think it just took St. John's a little longer to figure that out. Because they had, like I said, they're not uber talented, but they're talented enough to be a tournament team. And I think they're on the road to that now. All right, so we're going to get to that about being on the road to that. And when we look at this, three games in a row, St. John's has won. Two games left in conference play, Murph, this week. Tuesday at DePaul, then Saturday they host Georgetown. Now, look, these are two of the worst teams in the conference. With two conference wins between both schools, DePaul, they don't have one. They've lost 16 straight games. So i got to ask this, Murph. Are you concerned about the Johnny sleeping on either of these teams this week? Because that would be a massive letdown. Right. That would go against some of the toughness that Rick Pitino was questioning. Are you concerned they might sleep on these teams this week? No, I'm not concerned. And, and when you, you can just look at what their record is. You said these are two worst teams in the conference yep. by far. No other Big East team is sleeping on these teams because they know these are the only two semi get or the two games that you should win. Like with these two teams, each every other team in the Big East knows that we have to win against these teams because these are our only games that, that aren't going to be, you know, just wars. You know what I'm saying? So and you mentioned they have two uh, Big East wins between them. Those two wins are Georgetown beating the ball twice. Right. Right. So right. it's not like neither neither team has beaten beat any other else. Big East team. Right. And, I, and and that includes St. John's. And St. John's is going to take care of business at DePaul. And they're going to probably take care of business at, at Georgetown. Because DePaul and Georgetown, they lack the talent that the other teams in the league have. It's just that simple. Yeah. Okay. So they, they'll take care of business. And I, and, and I really think... Uh, you know, they're going to put themselves in great position, you know, because of that. Because they had the big win at Butler. I think that was their biggest win of the season. The win at St. John's win at Butler. Uh, now they take care of business against DePaul and Georgetown. Uh, they'll have a, a nice record, uh, nice Big East record going into the Big East, East tournament, tournament and probably need to win a game. Maybe not. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to get into that because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna project that. Look just a bit ahead for St. John's fans. We're going to project some good things. We're going to try to give some positivity here. We're not going to bring people down like Rick Pitino might have done a couple weeks ago. But it works. Let, but it works. Let's say what you said happens. Let's say they win their final two Big East games. Right. They'll finish 11-9 in conference play. What do you think they'll need to do in the upcoming Big East tournament to ensure that they reach the NCAA tournament? A couple weeks ago, I was hearing uh, they probably have to win two games. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned they might only have to win one, especially with that win after Butler. Do they have to win one? Do they have to win two? What do they have to do in the Big East tournament? Assuming, right. assuming, folks, they take care of business this week. Right. And, and the key word you said is ensure. Sure. Now, yes. ensure is different than, you know, anything could happen. They could, you know, I think I have them in the tournament now. I have them as a 10 seed. You got them now. Yeah, in okay. the tournament. And this is, you know, this, 
I have them in the tournament after the Butler win, okay? And, and you know, the thing is you got to keep in mind about uh, NCAA tournament and bubbles and stuff like that. It's all relative. Like, a lot of people have their teams and they want to say, hey, you know, I watch my team and they're good enough and they, uh, their record, they're two games over – uh, 500 in the Big East, so they're gonna, they deserve to be in the tournament. No, it's all relative depending on what the other bubble teams are doing. Right. Right, so you, you're not just looking at St. John's, you're looking at com- you're comparing them to other bubble teams and, and, and their resumes, and I think St. John's resume is, is enough to get them in the tournament right now without a win uh, in the Big East tournament. Now, ensure... Yes, that's why... If you want to ensure it, you better, they should win that first round game, which is not going to be easy because right now I think it's projected that they'll be in the 4 or 5 game. So they're going to play either like Seton Hall or Villanova. Both of those teams could be in the dance too, right? So that's not going to be an easy game to win. But if they were to win that game, I think just one game in the Big East tournament, I think you ensure that they'll be in the dance. If they lose that game, but it kind of goes to what you said before. It kind of depends on what else happens in other conference tournaments, right. what happens with other bubble teams if they lose that game. We're not trying to be negative, the St. John's fans. Um, do you think they still get in? Is their resume strong enough? I think, I think that they would still get in. Okay. I think they would still get in. They might be in you know, the Final Four. They might have to play in Dayton or something like that, even though I think they're better than that, even their current resume. They don't have any bad losses. I mean, they lost to Michigan uh, early in the season. That's their worst loss. They don't have any other bad losses to quad three or four teams. They they don't they haven't gotten blown out in any even in any Big East games like a Seton Hall has, for instance. So I think their resume is strong enough to get them in, even with a loss, because that loss, like I said, if they're in the four five game, that's not a bad loss. Right. You not. lose to Villanova, you lose to uh, Seton Hall. That's that, that's technically not a bad loss. You lost to a another bubble or tournament team. So, but if you want to be safe, and if a St. John's fan wants to be confident. You want to win that game. At least. Yeah. They want to see him win that game. They don't want us to have to worry about anything else. Take care of right. business. Take care of business Take care this of business. week. Win a game at least in the Big East tournament, and St. John's could be dancing. We'll come back to the Johnnies a little bit later. However, as we approach March Madness and we look outside of the St. John's men's basketball program, Murph, what have you made of the state of New York College hoops this season? Because I, I talked – at the beginning of the season on this show with Zach Brazil, I had Zach Brazil on here. We talked about some other teams we thought that could be better. What would Fordham do this year? We knew it would kind of be a rebuilding year for them. Hofstra we talked about a little bit. We knew Iona was going to be rebuilding. What's the state of college hoops in New York? Has it been this season what you expected? You know, is it, or do you look at it as it's been a down year? I think, you know, I wasn't expecting much. I mean, it hasn't been a great year, let's be honest. And I think, you know, a team that you didn't mention is Syracuse, a New York team, yep. upstate. But, you know, we're kind of waiting on Syracuse to, to get back to where they used to be. But, you know, Syracuse has had a good year with Red Autry in his first season. Um, they had a better year than, than Bayheim's last year. So he, he has them. It looks like he has them going in the right direction. We'll see if he can ever get them to, you know, to Bayheim's heights when they were, you know, national uh, title contenders. We'll see. But Hofstra, you know, Hofstra still has a chance. They're top four in the CAA. Yep. So they have a chance, you know, once the to- – it's all about the, the conference tournaments for leagues like that. So can they win their conference tournament? If they do and they get to the, and they get to the dance, then we'll say, oh, it was a great year for Hofstra, right? Right. We won't even talk about uh, Colgate. Uh, They've got the a Ivy. chance as They have well a chance. They're mm-hmm. top four in the Ivy. They have a chance. Uh, you know, so – but other teams are down. Ione is down. Um, you know, it's been – I can't say this is a great – a great year for New York teams, uh, but, it's, but it's about what I expected. St. Bonaventure uh, in the A-10, they were supposed to be, I think, better, you know, but they have a chance in the A-10 tournament. So you, it's a good point you make, right? You know, it's, for a lot of these conferences, the smaller conferences, the mid-majors, get into the tournament, have a chance. Hofstra definitely has a chance. Right. Um, I think right now they're top three in their conference, so they definitely have a chance there. And look, we generally talk about the New York metro area teams, but I like that Murph expanded it to upstate for the yeah. people. We tried to keep and it Syracuse, inclusive. Syracuse, you know, that's Big East, uh, that's, that's history former too, Big former East Big East history. Big East history. Yeah. So we you know, kids support. from the city always went to Syracuse. You know, yeah, so I got to include them. Yeah, we got, yeah we, we've seen that. Uh, as a University of Pittsburgh alum, I've not had so much love for Syracuse over the years. I but yeah, but I you understand. You know, you know what it is. Look. I know this is New York got game. We talk mostly New York basketball, particularly around the New York area. But we're going to give Jersey some love here. We got to talk about Seton Hall, right? Because they're within the New York metro area. What do you make of the job Shaheen Holloway's done with the Pirates? And in your eyes, are they a tournament team? First, 
uh, Shaheen Holloway has done a tremendous job. I mean, you look at his roster, you, you talk about St. John's not being star-studded. Seton Hall isn't either. I mean, they just have, you know, workmanlike guys from different places. Uh, but, he, ha- you know, they were picked to finish ninth preseason in the Big East. He has him fourth. I think they're 11-7 and seven right now in the Big East. Nobody thought that that was possible, right? So he has them, uh, you know, looking pretty good. Now, when you talk about if they're in the tournament, I think right now I, the last bracket I did, I, have, I had them as my last team in. Okay. Last team in. They were my last okay. team in. But they lost to Connecticut by 30 today. That's not, that's not what you want. I mean, people, people always talk about bad losses being quad three, quad four losses. Like to, to, you know, For you, is it sometimes about when you lose and who you lose and how much to? But not just who you lose to, but yeah. you could, it's a bad loss. If you lose to anybody by 30. Fair. fair, you, fair know, you, didn't, you didn't compete. And it's on, you know, nowadays, now this time of season is when the committee says that they start watching all the games. And this game, and that Seton Hall game today was the only game on at noon today. The only big uh, Division One game on at noon today. So they were watching. And, and then they see Seton Hall lose by 30. You're not competitive. That's a problem. Okay? So I'm not sure if, if they're in right now. Hmm. Um, but we talked about it. The Big East is the second best conference in the in the nation after the Big Twelve, according to Ken Palm. Right, second best conference. They are eleven and seven in the Big East. Now the, the committee says they don't look at they don't they were not going to look at your conference record. They just take each team, look at their resume individually. Right. Still, their computer numbers, their net, they're in the sixties, which is very high for for an at-large team. Ken Palm, same thing. They're in the, for the high fifties or sixties. So their computer numbers don't look good, and that's due to a, they, they were blown out a bunch of times in the Big East, mm-hmm. about four, three or four times they were blown out by more than 20. And they also didn't do anything in the, in the non-conference. They didn't beat any of the non-conference teams they played. They didn't, none of those losses were bad losses, but they didn't win any of those games. right? So, it's, that's, so Seton Hall is really an interesting case. I think if you just look at by the eye test, they deserve to be there. But they've left enough room for the committee to, to come up with excuses why they would leave them out. So are they a team, you know, we talked about St. John's, the work they may or may not have to do. Are they a team that, look, you, you got to get some work done in the Big East tournament to ensure, bringing up that word again, to right. ensure that they get in because there's some skepticism and they're on the bubble in this situation. Do they need to do some work? Oh, that, I, I believe they have work to do. Okay. And remember, it's all relative, right? I say, I, I mentioned, they got blown out by 30 today. I had Virginia as my first team out. They got blown out by Duke. Right, so it's like, what are what are the other teams doing, right, to catch them? If they're if they're suffering the same fate as Seton Hall, then they might they might be okay. But I do think Seton Hall has work to do. They have they play Villanova this week and they played DePaul. We know that DePaul doesn't matter that win unless you lose it. It doesn't matter. So that Villanova game, which I'll be at on Wednesday, in at Seton Hall, yep. is a huge game for both teams. Really, I have Villanova in also, but. You know, both of those teams, they don't know, you know, they're on the bubble. They both need that game. So that's a huge game. And then once you get to the, to the Big East tournament, yes, I think Seton Hall needs to win a game or two, even more so than St. John's. Wow. That's, that, that's so I think if, if you have a Seton Hall, St. John's 4-5 matchup, which some people are predicting in the Big East tournament, which will be that Thursday game, a yep. Thursday afternoon game, that's a huge game. And I actually think it's bigger for Seton Hall. Then it would be for St. John's. Interesting. Okay, back to St. John's. If they are to make the tournament, and we look at what's going to happen with them next couple of weeks, final two games and the Big East tournament, who's got to be their best player over the next couple of weeks? Who's got to get it done, step up, show that toughness for them? The person that's been that guy for them all year, Dennis uh, Jenkins. I mean, he's been their guy all year long. Patino looks to him. He, he, he says it publicly that he's the best player on the team. He's the engine that makes the team go. He just needs to continue doing what he's doing. Uh, I mean, he's been, he's been tremendous. He's been a leader. You can tell on the court he's a leader. Off the court he's a leader. Uh, and he's putting, he puts up numbers, right? He's, 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 scoring, he's, he's scoring. He gets other people involved. He plays tough on both ends of the floor. He just needs to continue doing what he's doing, and I, I have no doubt he will. It's, it's really about the other guys stepping up. Soriano needs to step up mm. uh, um, from the transfer from Penn. I'm, I'm just blanking on his Blank, name right now. Blanking on it. Blanking yeah. on it. On Dingle. 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 Dingle, Dingle, Dingle needs Dingle to step, step up. up. He remember he last year he was he was the led the nation or second in the nation in scoring. Scoring. Yep. This year he's been very inconsistent. 
you know, recently, last couple of games he's played well. He needs to continue that. He needs to be a guy who can score 15 plus points for them every night. He shot the ball while the last couple of games. We'll right. see, if, see if he can do that as well. So, yeah. you know, it's going to be Jenkins and it's going to be the others need to step up as well. Yeah, so you've, Jenkins, you feel like you can count on. Right. want to see if those other guys can step up as well. Last thing for me here, Murph, I'm going to have you put on your prediction hat with the Johnnies. Right. In a few weeks, when Selection Sunday rolls around, I know you're going to be watching, seeing what the committee does. Will the Red Storm be dancing, or are they going to be on the outside looking in? What do you say? They're going to be dancing. That's my, that's my prediction. I feel good about it. Like I said, I have them in as a 10 seed You got them in now. right now. And not, not one of the last four in. I have them, you know, in between the last six to eight teams in. So I think they're in pretty good shape now. Their, their computer numbers, unlike, unlike Seton Hall, are great. You know, they're, they're not great, but they're, they're in the 30s and 40s, and those teams usually get in. Okay, they're going to have a, they'll, they'll probably end up with an 11 and 9 Big East record when they take care of business against Georgetown and DePaul. And so, like I said, I still feel like they have a chance if they lose, but I, I like their chances in the Big East tournament because of Patino. You know, the, you have no, no more experienced coach, no better coach, you know, in those type of situations. He's been there, done that. He's, he's won Big East tournaments before, he's won the national championship before. So they're not going to be intimidated when they get there. I, I, you know, I worry about Seton Hall more than I do in a, ma- in a matchup. It would be tough for Seton Hall to beat St. John's three times in right, a season. because they beat them twice. Right? right, and they just recently beat them in a game St. John's thinks they should have won. So I think if that all, you know, comes together and they play each other in the Big East tournament, I, would, I really like St. John's chances. Either way, like I said, I think St. John's finishes the season strong. Uh, they might not even need to get a game, but I would bet on them getting a game or maybe two. In the Big East tournament. All right, you feel you're feeling good about St. John's. That's yeah, got to yeah. make Saint the Sounds fans feel good going in. And, and look, if they're playing well going in, they could be a dangerous team in the tournament. I got a bonus question for you. You know, I got to ask you this, my Pitt Panthers. Hey man, are they getting I, in? I was hoping they, are they might. Getting in? They, they might. They might. They, they might. Good. They're on the bubble. They might. They, they were my last four. They were my last four out. Like maybe that fourth team. They were. This weekend they took care of business. Took care of business. Took care of business. Did. Whereas Wake Forest did not. Did not. Virginia did not. And I, and you look at those those three ACC teams, uh, Wake Forest, Virginia, and Pitt. I like Pitt's chances out of out of those three to get in. I like it. I'm hoping it, I'm hoping it happens. March Madness time. That means Murph is going to be taking over the TV. His son is not going to be happy yeah, no. about that. But it's a, good one. it's a good one, man. New York college basketball has been good to watch this season. I think we're hoping that we get some good energy from St. John's yes. here in postseason play. It should be an interesting one. That is Jamal Murphy, the black etologist. Check him out on the Bros Pod, co-host of the Up Next Pod. He also does some writing for Anscape. Check all that out. Murph, enjoy the March Madness. I know I'll be talking to you soon about the college hoops. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. All right. All right, again, check out Murph. We'll be back with more on your Got Game. The Knicks are heating up. All right, special thanks, as always, to my guest, Jamal Murphy, doing a great job covering college basketball this week. That does it. We're out of time. we got to bounce on this edition of the show. As always, i got to thank the people who make it possible. Thanks to my director, Zach Taub. Editor, Katherine Cooper. Producer, Brian Wachowski. Appreciate y'all so much. That does it for this edition of New York Our Game. We'll be back next time to talk more about New York Hoops. And thanks for watching New York Got Game. Boom shakalaka.